this is my bag. <laughs> and today we are doing a type of video that is not usually my bag. <laughs> well, I should clarify, I love watching these sorts of videos. They've got loads of amazing little noises. And things going into pockets are just satisfying. They just are. But, admittedly, it's quite different from some of my, uh, I guess, some of my recent content. So, if you felt so inclined, you could imagine this is a uh, role play of a man showing the contents of his bag. Man and bag. 2021. Um, maybe I die at the end. Who knows? Use your imagination. Let's crank up the asmr ness of this by adding some rain sounds. Nice. See? Now we can roleplay like I'm your sort of cozily dressed best friend sort of type and I'm showing you the contents of my bag on a rainy day in uh, this room. So by way of a sort of uh, disclaimer, prologue, preamble, this in no way represents my recommendations for uh, ASMR video creation or content creation in general or even photography. This is just an accumulation of my stuff and stuff that I use. It represents what's in my bag 2021. And two, I'm not being paid by anyone to say anything in this video. It's just stuff that I like. So, let's crack in. This is my camera bag from a bag maker called Billingham, um, and they're an English bag maker. They've been making bags since the 70s, and this is made of canvas and leather, and I love it. It's just so well made. And for a camera bag, you don't necessarily want to uh, skimp on the quality of it. I mean, this is an expensive-ish bag, but I got it secondhand for an absolute steal. It's just got nice sort of, you know, brass, hardware, and everything just feels very solid, which I like, particularly when you're like me and you're transporting gear around often. So, it's a, this one's slightly sort of form over function sometimes, just by virtue of the fact that it was made in, well, the design is from the 70s. I think this particular bag it's from the 90s. Yeah, it's 25 years of billion. So, it's made in 1998, I think. This one was released. <clears throat> Tan and black. Oh, love. Okay. So, when I say form over function, it's not the quickest thing to get into. Because these brass buckles don't have like a sort of quick release strap. But that's fine. I'm not having to do sort of quick draws and wildlife photography and such. I'm just transporting gear. So, let us explore the bag's contents. I love compartments. I love things going into compartments. And while I'm typically not the most, like, organized of people, that again. Nice. I'm not the most organized person, but I do like things having a home. And with camera bags, everything has little pockets, little dividers, and little segments, just so you know where your gear is at all times. Now, 
I should say here that some of the gear that I use isn't currently in this bag because I'm currently using it like these two mics and you, the camera. But I have a lot of stuff so I can show you what goes where. large bag as you can see and would fit a variety of lenses cameras of all shapes and sizes it's very very good this top bit here is also waterproof canvas so it's a very well made bag now as a photographer you do tend to sort of accumulate loads of bits be it sort of uh, memory cards or batteries and in the case of ASMR making microphones these are two Rode NT1As, which are the microphone that a lot of ASMR creators use for their binaural stereo recordings. Not least because they have a very, very low noise floor. If of interest to anyone, that means that they're very, very quiet mics. They can pick up very, very quiet sounds. And that car out there. But, if you are in the business of making ASMR videos, you tend to experiment with different mics to see what works with your voice, just to see which ones you prefer. So, I've got compartments here for the two main mics I use, which are, which are reasonably new mics actually, which are the Sennheiser MK4. Incredibly well made mics. These feel so solid, like incredibly robust. The Rode NT1As, and again, this is turning into a bit of a product review. I don't mean it to be. These, while very, very cool mics, and they look really, really nice, are sort of hollow, feeling very, very light, which is good when you want to balance them on the stand, like I'm doing now. But these, one, are slightly better for my voice. They bring out a lot of the um, sort of bassy, mid-tone warmth. And these ones have a bit more of a kick to the high frequencies. So, I love playing with new mics. They're really, really good fun. But the best part, <laughs> it's not the best part really, but for the sake of this video, they just fit so nicely into this little schlop here. Again, the other one is exactly the same. Just goes into its little home. I love things having a home. I'm just going to slide them in a few more times. Oh, not too many times, because I need this video to remain strictly family friendly. when I don't have my main camera on me. My main camera, as you might suspect, is over there. That is the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV, I believe. That, yeah, it is. I can read it on the thing. It's definitely slightly overkill for typical ASMR video creation, or indeed just vlogging, or I wouldn't recommend it as a modern video camera if you were to pick one up for making YouTube videos. Don't do it. But it's a very capable photography camera, which is mainly what I use it for. And of course, the channel these days. So, 
Canon 5D Mark IV. That's where it usually lives. Next. This area. Which is just a perfect little pocket for this empty plastic case. Which usually holds my recorder. Which is currently hooked up to these mics recording me. This is a Zoom H. What is it? Oh, I should try not to adjust the settings while I'm recording. This is a Zoom H4N Pro. I had to check what the name was. No clue. This is what I use. One, to power these mics. That's picking me up at the moment. And two, um, as a sort of interface, these mics uh, record into. And so it's very helpful when I'm recording on uh, location, I guess. And I don't have my uh, computer or setup around me. Very portable, very handy, and has a very cold little home. It just, <laughs> when it's not hooked up to things, usually slots into there. In this hardcover plastic case. So, that's where that lives. That's the recorder. You can see this little interior here has loads and loads of Velcro dividers and pockets. Which gives you loads and loads of room for customization, different layouts and configurations to best suit your own purposes and gear. I'm sure I will change configuration of this bag many, many, many times. Now, this pocket over here holds two very important things. This is the Aperture MC. It is a tiny little light that I use all the time for details. Now, my philosophy, it's not mine, but one of the philosophies I abide by, is that uh, practical lighting will really help sell a green screened effect, or a green screen shot. So if you can have, let's say there's a window here in your imaginary composition, if you have a light here shining onto you from this window, then that stands a much better chance of looking somewhat passably real. Um, and so I like to try and uh, have an idea of the scene which I'm trying to create in advance. For instance, uh, I recently did a Christmas video which featured a roaring fireplace. Very, very nice sounds. And I used this as a little LED fireplace to project some of that light just hitting the side of me. And it was this sort of flickering firelight. Let's see if I can find it. see it at the moment. And it served just to give that a shot a little bit more realism. I guess a little bit more. So there are loads and loads of very cool little modes you can set it to. For instance, here's a cop car effect. This would be <laughs> if you were to want a cop car in your ASMR video, which I'm not sure if you would, to be honest. But who knows? Just a sort of pulse, a sort of party light, lightning, TV, faulty bulb, all sorts. It's not just effects. Basically, you can use it to, you know, you can choose any color you'd like and have it as a hair light or as a sort of detail light or just to, you know, show some in your bag. That's the Aperture MC. And I like it a lot. The other thing, which is potentially less exciting, but equally important, is 
a portable hard drive. This is a two terabyte tiny rugged hard drive from La C La C La La C Don't know, never know how to say it. But very, very important. Does it make a nice sound? No. You can barely hear it. So that goes into its nice home. Yes, so satisfying. I love it. Okay, where are we? <laughs> this is so much fun, making this sort of video. I don't know why. Now, we get to move. There are so many seagull noises outside. Is this a rainy day with seagulls? You're spoiling the illusion, come on. So, now, a warning. We are now delving in to some of the less exciting pockets of the bag. They can't all be veritable treasure troves of technology. Sometimes you need cables and tape, but they're going to make the same interesting sounds and I'm probably the only one who cares. What have we got here? This is a clamp. Who doesn't carry clamps in their bags? Heavy duty clamps. Look at the amount of things that you can clamp. So far, just this bag. But I dare you to use your imagination. It can clamp loads of stuff and it doubles as a little hand workout. Huh? In a similar vein. <laughs> this feels like quite a dodgy bag. If you're a murderer or a photographer, let's not go with that actually. If you're a photographer, gaffer tape or duct tape is your number one best friend. Was that pleasant to listen to? Who can say? But the amount of things that I've taped to uh, light stands and uh, sort of like props to set pieces and microphones to things and this things that should not logically be taped over the past 10 years of me taking photos is astounding. I tape everything. This is the most useful, useful, useful thing in a photographer's toolkit or just in life. I would just have my memory cards just lying loose around my house. 
adulting. A pen for the notebook, because otherwise, how do you write things? Smart. Hashtag Atlas is smart. There you go. And this. These are tiny little Bluetooth headphones in case I am filming a collab with the lovely Crinkle Oven. Are they making noises? That's exciting. In case I'm filming a collab with Crinkle Oven and various people around the world in which we need to be in the same scene at the same time, such as when we did her operating room video, which was very, very, very cool. There are about five of us all around the world. I say all around the world. I'm probably the only person not in the States. Had this in, if I could fit it in. Well, just played some stuff. And then we can hear each other film, which I thought was very cool. So, I carry these around. And then this one. I have a bunch more useless stuff. Like an SD card uh, receiver, transmitter. What am I trying to say? An SD card reader. We got that. SD card reader. A cleaning kit for your camera. Very useful. Don't be like me, don't just use your t-shirt. Hand sanitizer. Obviously useful. More microfiber cloths. Is the sound of rummaging nice? secret compartments. Let's do that again. So good. Do I have anything in them? Batteries. nothing in this pocket. A waste of time me showing you those. Okay. The side of these bags have little mini bags. Little, little, little children. That can be attached or disconnected as you please. Which helps reduce the profile of the bag if you're going traveling or something like that. But I think I prefer the look of them when they're attached. And because when I'm going to where I need to film, I always need to carry uh, loads of props and other junk. So, I tend to need the space. Okay, let's just reattach this in the noisiest possible way. Get in there. Nice. And then this one. See, it's like a bag and sort of game. The long lockdown nights fly by. Very excitingly, I have cables and chargers kept in this pocket. This is just a cable that connects the camera to uh, either a computer or an iPad or something like that.
this pocket. Rather excitingly. Features headphones. Now, I'm the sort of person who uh, doesn't leave the house ever without his headphones. And in fact, spends very little of his life not wearing headphones these days. But it's of uh, crucial importance to ASMR. These are the Sony WH-1000XM4, a very succinctly named product. They're sexy, I like them, I like them a lot. So these are my headphones. They're very handily, sort of just curl up into this case. video I make, I like to uh, sketch out very vaguely how I see it looking, and uh, often that involves making a shot list first as well. So I, I rely far more on my shot list than my script. I don't really have a script. I have very much a um, sort, of, uh, sort of series of words <laughs> that describe and paint the picture to me as to the sort of thing that I'm making. Does that make any sense? Am I just talking out of my ass? Anyway, iPad, incredibly useful tool. I think we have now come to the natural conclusion of the most exciting video in the world. It's been an action-backed ride. enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed doing it. <laughs> this is exciting. I never get to do an outro. If you've enjoyed watching this, please flick us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below. Be like, Atlas, oh my god, I really like your bag. Can we see more of it, please? How about maybe a series of you continuing to show us what's in your bag? That'd be great. Happy to. Hey, let's do it. Let me a comment saying that, and uh, if you're not subscribed, feel free to do so. Mm, but yeah, hope you're all happy and healthy and well. See you in the next video.